What's up, Glad? Welcome back to Gladiator's Tennis. And to Alicia, what are you doing? What are you doing? What do you mean? I'm doing the intro for the slice video. Since when? We need a Grisha for a slice video. So yes, what's up, Glads? Welcome back to Gladiator's Tennis. And today we will teach you how to turn your opponent's loco with the slice. The intro is done. I will do the rest by myself. Thank you. So. <laughs> First of all, guys, you might not know this, but uh, not all the slices were born equal, let's say, okay? Some of them are just neutral, some others are defensive, and there are the offensive ones. Not too logical, but me and Roger, <laughs> we still do it. <laughs> Same quality, huh? Same quality. All right, guys, let's start with the neutral slice, all right? But before that, a slice happens when you give the ball that backwards rotation. And depending on the situation, you want to give more or less of that rotation. When it comes to the neutral slice, where your intention is to break the rhythm of the point because sometimes the intensity of the point is so high that you want to take a break, you know, to take a breath one second. Mini holiday. In that situation, you do a slice. But here, you want to give the ball just enough of rotation to keep the ball low and slow the ball down because Otherwise, if you do too much of a spin, you might mess up the contact point, the height and the speed of the ball and that might give you some problems. Alright, but how the hell do you even do that? Well, <laughs> well, with my talent, but for the other people I will explain. The main point is to hit the ball a bit lower than your shoulder, alright? But don't let it drop too much, you don't need that. All right, and just don't be too tense, just direct the ball wherever you want. And also, when you're executing this shot, make sure that in the contact moment, your racket is in front of your elbow, all right? So it's like ballerina movement, it's not this weird thing, all right? Otherwise, you're gonna lose control, basically. And the amount of slice that you give to the ball is controlled by the angle of the movement of your arm, all right? So in this case, this is gonna be a long downwards movement. And also, make sure to keep your arm rigid. Don't make it wobble, all right? Keep it rigid. All right, guys, so now let's talk about the defensive slice. And the first one being the one when you're forced to one of the sides and all you think about is how to save yourself and keep the point going. In this case, you're not exactly doing a slice, but rather blocking the ball a little bit, you know? You're using your opponent's power against them. When you're in such a forced position, you don't have the luxury to risk it when choosing the direction. So play it safe. Don't go for the lines and just focus on putting the ball back in the game. You see, here the direction is not as important as the speed and the depth of the ball. Because your goal here is to win time to manage to properly recover. So your ball has to go as deep as possible and, believe it or not, slow. You see, a slow ball is really hard to attack, so this way you get more chance for survival. Unlike with the normal backhand where sometimes you can do an open stand if you need it, if you don't have time, with a slice, you're never gonna do that. Even if you're super forced. It's, it's just not gonna work, all right? And I mean, it's also gonna look kind of weird. Yeah, better to be elegant. You know that the, the curling guy that does oh, this yeah. Sh movement? Yeah, yeah, the... yeah. The second kind of defensive slice where you pretty much don't really have any other option is when the ball is coming really low and short where you don't have enough time to do a proper ground stroke and your only solution is to slice. 
here your goal is to give the ball as much backspin as possible and to do that your movement has to go pretty much parallel to the ground you also do that in order to give the ball that angle to pass over the net because you're pretty close to the net so you don't want to risk missing into it guys we're hoping you're learning something new in this video but i know that and we know that your brain capacity is unlimited so you can learn even more so for that subscribe to our channel so you can see more tutorials like this coming up all right and also of course follow us on instagram all right all right thank you all right all right so now it's time for the offensive type of slice and that's why uh, the middle east and roger is here to show you how it's done all right so yeah the first one is the simple change of direction you know when you're hitting cross court backhands very hard and your opponent is just destroying the ball and it's too hard for you to change down the line with a beautiful backhand in those cases you might just risk and change it down the line with the slice Here, instead of gliding the racket forward you're gonna do a side movement to hopefully give the ball that side spin so when the ball bounces it goes to the side and the opponent is forced to run even more show us how it's done Ari. like this <laughs> oh second type of aggressive slice is the approach in this case if the ball is high if the ball is high you just hit a backhand no I mean yeah but that's another video stay tuned for that one but for now if the ball is high just make sure that you hit at your shoulder level and your racket is above the ball before hitting it because you have to make sure that the ball goes down so we're gonna do a long and uh, up to down movement but like pretty exaggerated you know from the sky to the hell I don't know not that much but like it has to be up to down all right all right All right, now let's talk direction. In this case, trust me, nine out of 10 times, you're gonna go to the backhand. When you're doing this shot to his backhand, try to make it as short as possible because that way he's gonna have less angle and space to do a passing shot. And if your shot crosses the alley line, mwah, fantastic, bravissimo, you're a talented master. And the third aggressive slice is my favorite one. Is that short, annoying, soft slice that I do that Grisha loves because whenever I do that he's obligated to go to the net without a proper approach shot so that way I have more chances to do him a passing and uh, vamos on his face great I hate it and I'm the one explaining it how did that happen I mean it's it's pretty much a drop shot that just didn't work out Grisha Right, fine, but it is almost like a drop shot. But here your intention isn't for your opponent not to reach to the ball, but for them to get there, but hit a really low and uncomfortable slice in the half court area, which is the dead zone. And to do that, you're gonna do a really slow downward movement to take all the energy from the ball, leaving it pretty much dead in the service box. So guys, just one small little advice is to not be afraid to slice, all right? Practice it because it can really be a lethal weapon or an unbreakable defense. But maybe don't overdo it because you might end up forgetting how to do a proper backhand while you're pointing at me, yeah. Okay. And we, we really hope you've enjoyed the video, which is what really matters. And you know, if, if it helped somehow and you've learned something, it's, it's a good bonus, right? Yep. See you in the next one, bye-bye. Sloco with the slide. You know, a moment.
moment to take a breath. To <laughs> take a breath. <laughs> when you're in such a forced position, you don't have the luck. <laughs> Our effort should go to. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doing this shot. Shut. <laughs> the slide. The intro is that. Without a proper Proper approach. It's called an approach, Arik. It's called an approach. Proper previous approach. Without a pre-pre. Then he's always looking.